Albert Einstein once said, two things are infinite, the universe and the 40-day trial for WinRAR. I'm not sure about the universe. Of course, Albert Einstein never said that. That's just a slightly modified meme. But what is the deal with WinRAR? How come you can continue using it for free even after the 40-day trial period expires? Well, long story short, it's actually because of the company's business strategy. They actually allow it. In 1993, the world was introduced to Rashal Archive or RAR, a proprietary archive file format that supports data compression, error recovery, and file spanning. It was developed by Russian software engineer Evgeny Lazarevich Rashal, but the copyright for the file format is held by his brother Alexander. Two years later, we got WinRAR, a file archiver utility for Windows, which would be used to create and view archives in RAR or ZIP file formats and also unpack a whole bunch of other archive file formats. WinRAR is distributed as a try-before-you-buy software, which should mean that you can use it for free during a defined period of time and then make a decision on whether you would like to keep it or not. If you would like to continue using it, according to the terms of use, you have to purchase a license. But if you ever use this software, and chances are you probably have, you know that you can continue using it after the trial period, despite the fact that you didn't purchase a license. And all the functionalities that were there when you just installed it will still work. The only thing is that you'll constantly have to deal with its hallmark reminder message. Please note that WinRAR is not free software. After a 40-day trial period, you must either buy a license or remove it from your computer. Now, if I guess that the majority of the people watching this video never purchased that license, I'm pretty sure I won't be far off. Home users rarely do, and if you're feeling guilty about it, don't be so hard on yourself because the company knows that you're using their software for free, and as it turns out, they actually allow it. While talking about software piracy in a 2013 interview for Softonic, CEO of WinRAR, Burak Camboy, stated the following. The problem does not hurt us as much as it may hurt others, since we already have a very liberal way of allowing users to continue using our software after the trial period is over. Many users actually believe our software is freeware, and why would you bother about using a pirated and potentially harmful version if the original can be used instead? Allowing users to continue using WinRAR without a license after the 40-day trial period is something that the software actually benefits from. In fact, it can be viewed as a very bold business strategy, one that not only helped the company battle software piracy, but also allowed WinRAR to become one of the most commonly used programs in the world. And that's great, but the next logical question is, how do they make money? And the answer is simple, through businesses. The WinRAR general terms and conditions of business for customers imply the following. The customer may download the RAR software at no charge from the websites winrar.com and rarlab.com and use the software again at no charge for 40 days. During this period, all of the functions of the RAR software are available to the user with the exception of the functions add authenticity information, show protocol file, and delete protocol file. The purchaser should test the RAR software during this test phase to determine if it meets his requirements and needs. In particular, the customer must determine if the RAR software runs under his operating system and in his desired hardware and software environment. He promises to acquire a license for the RAR software only if and when he has assured himself that he can answer the above-mentioned questions with yes. Now, even though average home users usually don't care about legal stuff, Businesses have to. If they want to be on the legal side of things, or at least keep a good reputation, companies will buy licenses for all the software their employees use, and the same applies in this case. Of course, not all companies play by the book, but a great number of them that do buy licenses in order to avoid potential sanctions or prosecution are the greatest source of revenue for WinRAR. And as for the average home users, well, they have their role too. I like how one Reddit user put it, those users still help in small but important ways by keeping the software in use, keeping download counters high, leaving ratings and reviews, keeping the name out there and recognized. By allowing regular users to keep using the software's functionalities, but with the price of constantly getting the little nag message, the company increases the chances of people actually purchasing WinRAR, whether it be out of honesty, guilt, or even by accident. 
Getting users to buy fully featured programs is not that easy. According to industry research firm Softletter, 66% of online companies surveyed had free trial to paying customer conversion rates of only 25% or less, but in the case of WinRAR, it would appear that they simply want their software to be out there. So much that in 2015, they officially released a completely free to use personal edition for China. It's also worth noting that WinRAR has an Android app. It is free, but it can accumulate revenue through ads. And in case you're wondering, no, that version actually doesn't have the little nag message. Because of this dialog box, WinRAR pretty much fits the definition of nagware, a term for software that persistently reminds the user to purchase a license. This type of software is also referred to as begware and even annoyware. Obviously, because people are often irritated by the constant reminders, but when you think about it, it's really not such a bad thing. At least not in the case of WinRAR. The developers could easily prevent you from using the software after the 40-day trial period ends, but they don't. Sure, it is a way of keeping users from switching to free alternatives like 7-Zip, but still, in my humble opinion, that's a pretty cool move. But that would be all for this time. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and maybe even share the video with your friends. For more content in the future, just hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and as always, stay strong.